the reality is, is that I'm a minister of a very, very wide portfolio. So I take it into, uh, into scope all of IT within all of government. Um, I do all the HR within all of government. I do all the buildings, anything that's vertical infrastructure. I maintain, you know, everything from the legislative building to, you know, prison up in, uh, in uh, Headingley and everything in between. Um, every building that I was a civil servant, I've signed a lease for. Pretty much everything the government buys um, is bought in my department as well, and we do a whole lot of uh, the tendering and, and procurement initiatives. So there's there's a lot going on, and what I would say in every single division in my uh, department, there is some form of uh, innovation, some form of uh, new technology or new approach that's being applied, um, and that goes from you know areas that are already working really, really well to ones that are ex experiencing uh, challenges. So I'm just going to focus a little bit on um, an area that's currently experiencing a challenge, which is vital statistics. So vital statistics is in charge of giving, uh, you know, birth certificates, marriage certificates, death certificates. That's their their primary um, job. And I think throughout the pandemic, um, a backlog was growing there. And what was, you know, perhaps most concerning for me was there wasn't necessarily a good indication or a good sense of how big it was or when it had grown or how it had got out of hand. And that's an indication that that the um, the measurements that you need to know that your department is succeeding or failing or that they're doing well or that they need attention, those measurements weren't there. And so uh, injecting those me measurements into the system is one thing we're doing. Making sure that we have enough staff to do the work is uh, critical. That's the first thing I think that we paid attention to. And I had the I have the uh, advantage of both being in charge of vital statistics in this case that needed the staff and the public sector, uh, or sorry, the public service commission who's responsible for hiring the staff. There's, there's actually a lot of things going uh, going on in government generally, like we're, we're deploying SAP as our new ERP solution that applies across government. That's a huge, huge initiative, and it is going to, um, I think, uh, impact uh, vital statistics as well, as well as the Public Service Commission when it comes to um, better ways to recruit um, and to retain uh, staff. I think it's critically important that we we ensure that we have a professional public service and that the, the people that are engaged in that public service feel valued, that they that they can get recruited in a way that's com uh, compatible with the um, uh, with the, uh, the private sector, right? Because you're competing against the private sector for for uh, for these employees, and we want to make sure that we're doing really good things that way. Um, when it comes to the actual technology of, of registering births and, and and that kind of stuff, it's not high tech. It's it's just tech, and uh, you know. So right now, there's I think there's an online way that you can um, uh, you can apply for a birth certificate. All right, we're going to take a look at that, make sure that it makes sense, that it's not too complica complicated or confusing, and then make sure that people can get a real sense of where their certificate is in the process. I'm trying to be innovative, try to um, find ways that government can um, do things differently and really focus on what's important for their citizens and what, the, what, the, what their experience is and how important um, not just uh, the services that you're delivering to them, but even how they're perceived to make them more, um, more professional, more efficient, more responsible, more um, even warm in a sense, right? Like more human, um, which, which might sound counterproductive when you're talking about technology and efficiency, but fundamentally, if, if someone um, wants to get a hold of the government or they have a question or concern, it's, it's really important that they be able to actually talk to someone, a real person, who's able to address that. But the only way you can do that is by um, ensuring that everything is running very, very smoothly and that the exceptions are rare. Um, so that's what we're, we're working towards. Uh, I, think, I think it's so important that you, you, you don't feel the burden of having to reinvent the wheel in every single jurisdiction. The challenges that we're facing here in Manitoba are not much different than the challenges they might have faced in Saskatchewan, Alberta, or in a host of the, um, you know, jurisdictions down in the U.S. or even in Europe, right? And we can look at these other jurisdictions and say, well, what are they doing? Is it to, like, 
is it applicable in the Manitoba context or do we have some unique challenges? And I would say there's some unique things about Manitoba, right? Like it's a very large geographic area. That's a challenge. I'm responsible for ensuring that we get you know, broadband internet across the province. Well, that's a lot easier to do in, in, in the Netherlands where my, uh, my grandparents came from than in Manitoba, which is you know, 20 times the size with 3% with, uh, with of the population. Um, so there's things that are unique to Manitoba. Um, and those have to be appreciated. But at the end of the day, collaboration is gonna let you get best practices from all these other jurisdictions and, uh, and then hopefully be able to apply them here in Manitoba um, to get success.